Sean, driven from County Kerry, Ireland. But I'm especially to talk to you. That's the problem. If you can't hear me, it's Sean's fault. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Paul Nolan and John Cook. We're the owners of Raglan Road. And uh, delighted to see you all here and sober at 10.30 on a Friday morning. Um, we're going to, as you know, this morning unveil a fantastic painting uh, by Graham Novel. Uh, the reason that happened is because uh, it was John Cook's great idea that we should um, bring some great Irish artists over here uh, to the Festival of Masters. Uh, Graham has done a painting of Raglan Road, and uh, there's a great story about Raglan Road, uh, how, how that road or that uh, poem became famous. But the really funny story is, is that when Disney invited us here to do the pub, um, we got very excited, but the, the downside is we had to build it very quickly. And it's quite a big pub, as you know. And we were sitting in Dublin saying, oh my God, how are we going to get a pub built in Ireland, ship it over here, uh, find a couple of hundred people to come work for us, work out how to um, get some great food going, some great service going. So John and I were kind of busy for a couple of months. And then we get a phone call from the nice people at Disney saying, oh, by the way, when are you going to call this place? And we looked at each other and said, uh, they need, we need a name, John. We need a name for this place. Because we've done hundreds of pubs for other people around the world, but we've never actually done it for ourselves. So of course we left it to the last minute. So John and I uh, left the, the office at about 8 o'clock, and we went, of course, to our local pub. And uh, we had a couple, and a couple more, and a couple more. And we left at about 4 a.m. And although we worked together for an awful long time, we couldn't agree as to what the name should be. But where we eventually came from was that uh, John loved the music uh, of a guy from the Dubliners, a uh, famous Irish band, and I love a certain guy's uh, poetry called Patrick Kavanagh. And Patrick Kavanagh was a, a famous Irish poet who was um, looking out the window of his apartment one day, and this woman went walking down the road, and he fell instantly in love with her. And he chased her and chased her and chased her, but he could never actually get together with her. And it's a great story of unrequited love. And uh, Luke Kelly, who's this, uh, our Bob Dylan, uh, this guy from the Dubliners, uh, was a fantastic uh, folk singer. And eventually Kavna and Kelly got together, of all places, at a bar, a pub. And they both had big egos and they were kind of afraid to talk to each other. Um, but eventually, after being lubricated with several uh, gallons of Guinness, they eventually got to talk to each other. And um, Kavna leaned over to Kelly and said, I have this poem called Ragged Road, and I think it would be great as a song. And Kelly said, you know what, for years I've loved that poem, and I've always had a tune in my head for that. And the song is called Raglan Road, and it became very, very famous. So that's why you're sitting in a pub called Raglan Road, um, because John and Paul got drunk, and because they were late with a name uh, for the good people at Disney. But way back when, when uh, a great poet uh, and a great folk singer got together uh, with this great concept. And so it felt only right that we should bring a great Irish artist to bring that story to light. So I'll hand you over to John to tell you that story. John Cook. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. It's kind of a big day for us here, our little pub in uh, Walt Disney World. Um, a few people to thank very quickly. I'd like to thank Mary Hope and, and uh, all the crew at Disney uh, for A, putting together the festival and helping us uh, with this event here today. Uh, our team at the pub, and Sean and Lorraine and all the folks here that make it happen day in, day out. Uh, Graham and, and Ruth, Graham for his, his uh, his art, I suppose, and, and for taking the time uh, for both of them to come out here and officially hand over the piece. Um, and uh, lastly, thank you for, for uh, taking the time to come see us today. As Paul said, kind of, the, you know, the, I suppose the public, given its scale and whatever, could be seen as a as a single act of madness. But um, we've always strived to make the, the pub very authentic in terms of its origins. Um, we use a lot of architectural salvage that was begged, borrowed, or stolen from other hostelries across Ireland where we built the place. The room you're sitting in, the panelling on the wall, its first incarnation was in the late 1700s in a great uh, Irish country house. So the, the pub has is, is always been about our, our heritage, but in many respects it's also about an Ireland of today, uh, as much as it was or is about an Ireland of, of yesteryear. Uh, and as we um, put the pub together, um, 
there are many elements that are, are more about Ireland today than they were of the past. Particularly if you look at our food, Ireland will never be known for great cuisine, uh, but that's changed over the years. So what we do from a food standpoint today is very much more of what you find at home today rather than 100 years ago. And we I express um, the Irishness and the pers personality of, of what it means to be Irish in a number of different ways through the pub. But looking at our heritage and our past, looking at Ireland of today, and also, in as much as possible, looking at the character and the wit of what it means to be Irish. Um, and probably more specifically in terms of the pub here, since it's a Dublin pub with a Dublin story, Paul and I are both Dubliners, about taking that perspective in terms of a Dubliner standpoint, what it means to be both a Dubliner and being Irish. So, as, as we put the pub together, we looked at things of, of Ireland today. And one of the things that was always on the kind of to-do list or aspirationally part of what we would like to have brought to our pub was Graham's art. Um, I'm of a generation that remembers um, an older Ireland and I've lived through a very exciting time when Ireland has changed. So as a race today, we're probably more proud of what we were than apologetic for it. We've seen ourselves grow on the world stage through politics, through media, through music, with the likes of you too, and also through the arts, and I would include Graham's work as being part of that, that movement, part of modern Ireland that's out there, that's more confident about itself, that's braver, that celebrates its idiosyncrasies uh, as part of the national psyche and, and treats them as a strength. So as, as an Irish person, um, what are we? We're probably a little bit cynical. We have a slight uh, left to censor, censor and right sense of humour. We don't take ourselves too seriously. We don't, people who take themselves too seriously, we don't take them too seriously. Any celebrities who still live at home or Irish celebrities that come home, coming home to Dublin is a great, a great leveller. We don't tolerate ego. But fundamentally what is kind of central to the Irish psyche is its, is, is its character and its people. And the people were to ask me about Graham's art and how I feel about Graham's art, and this is a huge day for us here because long before we ever built the pub, I was an admirer of Graham's art. So people were to ask me today, what, what, what is it that, that Graham's art means to you? And it, it's centrally, it, it's that sense of character and sense of, of braveness and boldness that is in New Ireland. But essentially, Graham describes it as he sets up attention in his paintings. And I take from that as what he actually sets up as a conversation. So if you look at any of Graham's pieces, there's a conversation going on between the characters within the piece. And art can be viewed at a whole variety of different levels, which is a wonderful thing about it. So you can you know, view it as something that you find visually interesting, or you can view it as something that makes you think or creates a conversation within your own head. So as I look at Graham's pieces, I get you know, the, the, the Irishness of the wit, um, the cynicism, and that slight mischief, mischievousness comes out in the conversation between the characters, the tension as Graham describes it. So for me, that's what Graham's art it, is about. It's that sense of character, sense of spirit, and the conversation between the characters. And, you, and you'll see as you look at the work today, you will see that conversation. And, and remarkably so, there are a number of paintings outside that the subject matter is actually animals or fish. And there's a, a painting out there of a group of sheep at the moment, and they're having the most marvelous conversation amongst each other. So he seems to be able to draw and create wit and conversation uh, amongst a whole variety of cast of characters. So for me, Graham's art is about not the character of the piece, it's the characters in the piece. And we're very pleased and proud today to be able to introduce you to the characters that is Rag and Roll, as envisaged by Graham Lowe. So without blabbering on too much, I am delighted to ask Graham to come up and help me unveil the piece, um, and uh, once again, thank you very much for your time.
and enjoy the wonderful hospitality of Raglan Road. So that's about it. Thank you. Graham, hang on for a second. You're not going to wait that easy. <laughs> um, to, uh, I suppose I might talk through the kind of characters really, really, really quickly. So I, I suppose by way of just kind of the, the cast of characters in the painting is we have uh, Patrick Kavanagh here, we have Brendan Dean, and uh, we have Joyce. And I suppose again the great the great whimsy and humour with Graham's work, you know, no one ever I, I don't certainly recall it ever being noted that or commented on that Kavanagh played Baron, which is an Irish drum. Or indeed if <laughs> Joyce played banjo. We certainly know being drank an awful Guinness. <laughs> but certainly within Graham's world, obviously that's how it's seen and, and interpreted. We have Lou Kelly here, who you heard Paul speak of. We have Ronnie Drew, who is a co-member, a family member of the Dubliner Folk Group, uh, who Lou Kelly performed with. We have a wonderful cast of Irish dancers up here. When, when we commissioned the painting, we, we were, I suppose firstly, when we commissioned the painting, we went to see Graham. Uh, with a lot of nervousness, because uh, through, through a, a, a fortunate set of coincidences, we were uh, we were given the opportunity to meet Graham to discuss the commission, and we were very nervous about doing that because Paul and I were sitting in the office one day and says we, we've got this great opportunity to meet Graham and we we take it seriously and Paul said I don't know I mean Graham's work is collected by Salon and De Niro and all the Irish celebrities from Colin Farrell to Bono you know those two muppets walking in the door what's he going to think of us will he take the commission seriously. Um, so we were somewhat disappointed when we met Graham because there wasn't an ounce of a diva or there wasn't an ounce of a contrary artist about him. Uh, he was very warm and very embracing. Um, and we kind of, being a, being a Dubliner, he obviously understood the principle of uh, the story of Raglan Road. And our view, really, we told him a little bit about the pub and, and we let him at it. And he said, Listen, do you want to come in and see the work in progress? And we said, no, no, we want, we want your vision. However, there were sneak peeks that the work as it progressed, you know, the wonderful world of technology and the wonderful world of Facebook. Graham is an enviable amount of followers on Facebook. So as the work was on, on unveiling or coming together, there were snippets going up on Facebook and there was wonderful, great, um, I suppose that wit that is Irishness and the wit that is Dubliners was, was coming across through the, the banter and the dialogue on Facebook. Um, and Graham's work is, is I, I suppose that the tone of the work um, is, is, is mischievous. Um, there was great consternation at one point in time. This character here, our chef, actually um, had, a, had a wonderful big smile and a wonderful set of, of, of perfect teeth. And, and I suppose two inaccuracies in that Irish people aren't necessarily known for mouthfuls of perfect teeth, <laughs> firstly. <laughs> and secondly, Graham isn't exactly known for painting big smiles. So there was a massive amount of, I think, probably the most consternation during the process was around the, the face of the teeth on this guy. So I think, again, as the, as the painting evolved uh, and Graham saw the piece coming together, he's now carrying more of a polite smile than, than, than a menacing uh, smiley grimace. Uh, so we have a nice family group here um, with the two principal characters from the Dubliners. And then, speaking to a more contemporary Ireland, up in the very top here, we have a gentleman uh, called Paul Houston here, otherwise known as Bono and his buddy here, uh, The Edge, and also his good wife, Ali Houston, uh, up on the top left-hand side of the piece. So that's kind of the, the principal cast of characters and how the story came about. Graham, have you any, any favourite element, character, piece? If there was a piece you could grab and say, I, I, I'd, I'd grab that uh, and I'd hang on to it. The leprechauns. The leprechauns. Well, you didn't paint these. No, they didn't. Yeah, again, a little famous post posting on Facebook. Graham went away to a weekend, I don't know where it was. But when he came back anyway, these the leprechauns in the back bar here had miraculously appeared. So the Monday morning posting on Facebook was, the leprechauns have got on my painting. <laughs> so there's mischief in it. Um, these two, two bartenders here, um, I think they're having great conversation amongst themselves as they look at the cast of characters in the pub. Um, to me, they're actually how they're dressed speaks to a time in Dublin in the 50s and 60s when when uh, bartenders you know dressed well and dressed stylishly. They look like bartenders actually from behind the bar, the Horseshoe Bar in the Shelton Hotel, which is a famous little pub in, in the hotel in Dublin. Um, 
so there's lots of conversations and lots of dialogue going on and, and I've lost myself for hours so far in this piece and trying to understand and interpret hey, what, what Graham was thinking uh, and also how I, uh, how I feel about it. So we're gonna, Graham's going to be around for a little bit so if anybody wants to chat to him one on one and kind of ask him what his thoughts were and, and, and why certain things exist uh, within peace I'm sure we'd like to chat to you. There's a whole lot of work outside here and on the entryway to the pub which is some great pieces there if you want to chat to him about that. Um, and I know Mary wants